Welcome. Welcome. To events Real Talk. Real Talk. Like I like to call it Ert. You hate it, but I love it. Hate it. It's fun. I'm Sarah. Uh, okay, so I work in the event industry, have been since 2009. I don't really want to date myself, but there you go. Yeah. Mostly worked on the facility end, but I've done catering and also um, the front of house event planning, if you want to call it that. I'm TJ. I won't say my last name. Um, Tracy Jr. Yes. Um, I've been in the events industry... I don't know. I guess it depends. Like, bar managing is that events? Kind of. 2006. Did we put it on your resume so you could get your job? Maybe. Then it'll count it. <laughs> um, I'm a events manager, but I don't know. 2020 really threw a loop in that, so I don't really know what I do now. Events Real Talk is a podcast where we say what most of you in the industry are thinking. Um, we're not thinking or didn't not. know you should have been thinking that. Yes. Yeah. So each week we share our unsolicited opinions, event experience, and the highs and lows of the event industry. Mostly lows at this point. Mostly lows. Yeah. Ert! Season Ert. 2! Ert! Welcome! What? 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 Welcome. Should we do this? Do, 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 do. No. Okay. What the fuck? There you go. Yay! She's on my level. I love it. So, what are we talking about today? Today we have a guest. Yeah, we like guests. Hi, Lauren. Hi, Lauren. Hi. Oh, she waves. She's very nice. It's the you should have done the beauty queen wave. Coming through the screen. Yay. Like, yeah, okay. All anyway. right, nobody's on your level. Apparently not. Apparently not. So, we are going to speak to Miss Lauren today for a follow up. Follow up follow-up all right so if you don't remember if you haven't watched it shame on you uh we had lauren on our podcast last fall to give us an update on how it was going at the hilton and what the um covid has done to the hotels uh so we thought we'd bring lauren back and see if she can update us on how things are going adjustments that they've made any things they've stopped doing now that the governor has so kindly removed all the restrictions left it up to the businesses and if you've attended anything, I'd love to know if you've attended anything and if you've seen any success and failures. She has. I saw her failures. I saw her. What do you mean you saw her? Where'd you see her? Meeting planner oh, showcase. Oh, well, yeah, I'm not talking about that. But anyway, all right. So tell us, how are things going? Things are going good, actually. Um, so, I mean, there's definitely movement uh, in the right direction in town. And um, I think with the, the governor's um, mandate, oops, okay. uh, the governor's mandate was that two weeks ago now. Um, so, you know, most, I would say most corporate businesses and of course the Hilton's definitely going to keep that. We have kept our mask policy in place. Um, and when Hilton re- uh, revealed, you know, all these protocols they've put into place with Lysol and Clean Stay and Event Ready, uh, they're going to keep that probably forever. Honestly, the masks, I, I can see them going away eventually. Um, but I don't know with food service, it's pretty interesting to see what what's going to happen with that um, if food service will be for a while, a long time. Um, But anyway, so with the Hilton, I mean, we still enforce where we we request and suggest that all of our guests uh, keep their masks on. But I mean, as if anybody's been out and about that works as well as can be expected for people. So, I mean, as an employee of the Hilton, you know, it, we keep them on and we, we just have whatever makes people feel safe and, you know, follow that suit. But I mean, the city, I mean, for College Station, I think, you know, I think the city's doing pretty well um, overall from where we were. So, right, even a little bit of occupancy seems better than when it was, there was none a year ago yeah so 
Um, and then, you know, with the, with them moving forward with football, talking about football. And then once they get the, once the meeting planners with A&M get the clearance, I think you're going to see a, a ton of movement. Yeah, I but, heard that too, TJ. Sorry, Lauren. Yeah. We're just really loud crashing bang. I've been hearing noises and then it just sounds like someone fell through the roof. But my guess is Michael oh. was closing his door. It wasn't, they were doing that upstairs earlier. Uh, <laughs> anyways, um, well, that's, that's good. Like I've seen a lot of things in town where you can definitely see people are getting out and moving and traveling. And so, I mean, that's good. And if y'all are yeah. keeping, I've seen a lot of um, businesses in town that aren't requiring staff or anybody to do the masks. So, you know, I thank you and the Hilton for keeping them. Cause it does, I mean, all things considered, I mean, it's, there's still stuff going around. Yeah. <laughs> well, there sure. is. And it makes me wonder if everyone who's getting vaccinated is going to end up being like, I'm immune. I was talking to some lady last night. She was like, I just don't understand why people won't get vaccinated. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't sit here. I have to leave this table. Yeah. There's like too much. There's, it's, you know, everyone, there's no right or wrong for sure. So no. Absolutely not. But, you know, it's someone mentioned, a colleague mentioned to me at one point, and she said that, you know, just because I don't necessarily agree with all of it when I go into a place of business, um, yes, of course, I want others to feel safe, but you shouldn't focus so much on me. And, right. you know, I understand if you may not think I'm making you feel safe, but you're wearing the mask, which has helped keeping you safe. I'm choosing to expose myself to this. That's my choice, which TJ and I saw when we went to an event recently. Um, my poor child sneezed in the direction of a lady that didn't have a mask on. And I told TJ, I was like, well, she didn't have a mask on. So my guess is she just don't care. It was not in the direction. It was on the lady. Like, yeah. This. What was it? It was her back. She had her back to us at the time. But yes, my poor three-year-old, he doesn't know any better. Well, um, I can't really control that. <laughs> you know. He can control the direction of his face. He just doesn't well, listen. Yeah. He could have sneezed directly on his mother. <laughs> he could have. I'm glad it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us um you know have you had to do any creative setups and things for events that you've had recently or since we've last talked not really I mean honestly um the you kind of have to go with we have we have our guidelines in place and um this is what we request or this is what we suggest but it's, I mean, really the meeting planner or the event coordinator or whomever's in charge, I mean, they're really in charge of the setup. And if they, you know, because there is so much gray area and I don't know if you all looked at the guidelines recently, the Texas guidelines, but I reread them yesterday and they've removed most of the restriction of the rounds and how people are seated and, um, and I, I need to relook at them today. I even think the part about how buffets have to be served now, I think that's gone. That's good to know because TJ and I were just talking about an event yesterday and that's on my list of things to do today is look at what the CDC has changed. I yeah. had a feeling it was coming, but it's specific yeah. to Texas, right? Yes. Yeah. Actually, I have them right here. See, yeah, I don't see... I'll have to go through it again, but it doesn't say anything about the buffet. So honestly, what we've been, especially now with the changes from um, the governor now, I mean, honestly, I just tell, I tell the meeting planners, like, this is your event and you have to do what's best for your guidelines. And even talking to um a few AM clients who have things kind of coming up. I mean, it's not like super soon. So there's no way to really know what guidelines will be in place. But honestly, I, I have to tell them, you know, it's, you have to tell me what AM says to do because my guidelines that, you know, the Hilton, I mean, you know, the Hilton and Texas, I mean, they leave things pretty open. So if, and right, I know that like the hotels at a hundred capacity, hundred percent, but a and M is not allowing a hundred percent. So, which is fine. We'll accommodate it, but I kind of need to know 
you know, we need guidance. Everyone's, everyone's events going to be different at this point. There's no. Standard. Well, but there's, there's nothing in the guidance that says when they take their event off campus. So like it's everything that's on campus. So if I was right. an a and planner going off campus, honestly, I'd be following what's happening in the community versus what's happening on the campus, just because there's the restriction is truly solely just to the campus itself. Now I get it. You don't want to have poor reflection on your department and things like that. If you decide to follow, um, you know, the state guidelines, but if you can do it in a safe way and you can prove, and then even now, if you're hosting an event of more than 10 people, you still have to have the Dean or the appropriate vice president sign off on it. Right. But you know, I think that's where the confusion comes from is that, Mm -hmm everyone is doing something different. Everybody is allowing something different. There is not a, this is the guideline you have to follow. Like nothing else matters. It, and that's across the entire United States. I mean, from state to state, it changes. From city to city, it changes. From county to county, university to university. I mean, what the university is doing isn't, doesn't directly align with what the state is doing or even what the city is doing. So that's where the confusion comes in. And if I was a meeting planner for the university, I mean, like you said, I would want to not get in trouble from the university if they turned around and said, well, you know, you weren't following our guidelines, even though you were off campus, you're an A&M entity. Yeah, see, and that's, problem- what, that's what okay. most have done. I'm sorry, that's no, what no. most have done. I mean, they're, they're being as strict as, you know, as we can be, right? So, I mean- every seat is six feet apart, um, or there's only so many people at around, you know, I mean, when people ask me, well, how many people can sit at around? Well, before two weeks ago, it said no more than 10. So I, you could put 10. Um, now that's not even in there. So every event has to kind of make that decision. And so, you know, what I tell people is, you know, my suggestion is whatever, if it's an, if you're selling tables, you know, to a company or to a business or to an office, if y'all are already in the same office, fine. Um, But, you know, the perception, you still want to be careful of what the perception is. So I wouldn't suggest like all of the tables be 10 people, but listen, it's not, it's really not, not our decision anymore. It's their decision on what makes them feel comfortable or their guests feel comfortable. I mean, the Hilton, you know, we have the signage is still up. We have the hand sanitizers. We have the Lysol wipes everywhere. I mean, all of that will continue to be in place in all the public space. But, you know, even recently, the last two weeks, you know, I'll have appointments and they don't have a mask on and we're still following the mask in, but all we can do is ask, but I don't, ask that if they're not going to wear it they're not you know going to yeah. wear it so and it's to each his own person I think it's a personal personal thing you have to just if you feel comfortable wearing it great if you don't great too I don't know there's no them all like you burn the books burn them all yeah no, uh, no don't, don't do that I know I'm kidding I'm totally kidding um yeah I mean it's always that word perception. Jamie can laugh at that word because my husband uses it frequently. And I mean, he's right. Does he know what it means? Yes, he does. Okay. More than you want him to know. Um, But he is, he's a hundred percent right. I mean, all the things come down to perception, no matter what you do. If you don't wear a mask, someone perceives you as, you know, a careless person, or if your business, you know, you choose to wear a mask and all your staff wears it, but you don't force somebody else that's a guest to come wear it. Like, I mean, a lot of them are encouraging, you know, we still want people to come. So they're trying to accommodate both sides of it. Right. And, you, you know, I mean, we have more complaints that come up and, you know, it's like, well, they're not wearing a mask. I, I'm sorry. You know, I, we try, but we can't control it. And, you know, they get upset by it, but the people that are asked to wear it and don't want to, they also get upset. I mean, you can't, can't force it. No. So, I mean, there's no winning. No. That's, there's no, there's no like, there's no winning in that sense. 
unfortunately, I went, you know, for everybody to just calm down. Yes. Mind Chill out. You. Just do what you do. Yeah. Just do what you do. Yeah. So how many events do you guys have coming up? I mean, if you're looking at summer or you guys got quite a few coming in April. Um, yeah. April seems pretty busy because family weekends moving forward and, um, you know, there's some events that were on campus. Not a lot. There's not a lot of a and stuff, but you know, that have moved off campus and, um, you know, we, of course we do, I know y'all know, we do catering off property too. So, you know, weddings at different venues, our April is actually pretty busy, which is great. And we, with our, a lot of our groups, um, that have been coming in, that train, you know, out at Teaks or whatever, they may not be able to go out to eat. So they're eating here at the hotel. So, um, I mean, the hotel is steadily busy this week, I would say is a little quieter, but, um, still have stuff going on. I mean, groups are still having their luncheons and. I, uh, the, I heard a fun story about Teaks on Sunday. I guess the oh. firefighters were in town. I have a friend that i play soccer with that apparently works out at Teaks. I didn't realize he was actually out at the fire field. He could, he was telling me some stories and he's like, I just can't believe that these guys behave this way. I said, so this is your first year dealing with it? Oh, just wait. <laughs> it gets better. Yeah. You know, and I think they had volunteers. I mean, they're not bad guys by any means, but it's like, you know, you get a bunch of good old boys together. They get to well, hang out for on vacation. Week. Yeah. Even though they're training, mm -hmm. you know, what I mean? exactly. Yeah. So, so they like to enjoy themselves. Yes, they do more than I, most. Yeah. I, I mean, to... so we have events, uh, all kinds of different events other than, you know, A&M, but what I've told at the meeting planner showcase last week, you know, of course, everyone says, well, we don't know. We don't know what we can do. And what I tell people is, listen, I know you don't want to start planning, but even if you have a date that you think, because you've been doing this event for the last you know, 10 years, like, let's put it on our books, because if not, when I think when they get released to start planning events, I think it's going to be a frenzy. And so, you know, a nice way of putting it. Yeah. I mean, and it's, she's a lot more PC than us. <laughs> people are going to want the same dates. And if you don't have it on there, I mean, well, why I not? Yeah, I think the problem is going to be is that they will not change the guidance probably until June. Right. I don't foresee them doing anything maybe because if they go forward with doing graduation, social distance, they're not going to change anything until that is over. So I don't foresee anything yeah. changing until after the semester is over. Right. I think they're probably in discussions about it, lots of discussions. I mean, you know, with all the things that you said that have changed, I mean, I'm sure all that's being taken into consideration. Um it's yeah. just really unfortunate because, I mean, I know you guys lost some staff and I'm, you know, I mean, you can answer this or not, it doesn't up to you, but, you know, I'm curious the, the climate of the staff now, now that you're starting to get a few more things, is it much better than it was before? Like people are a bit more engaged in what they're doing. You mean like, uh, you're like Hilton staff, like your event staff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, our staff is, we probably have about a third of our staff back at this point. Um, you know, the, the staff that we have at the, you kind of know what you're in for, you know, work is harder. There's a lot more of it. There's a lot more, you know, things in place to do and to follow. Um, but, you know, speaking from our staff, I think our staff is super engaged and it's probably the best group of the best staff that we've had in a very long time because, and I think everyone kind of sticks together at this point. I mean, it's, you know, it's different. Some days are hard and everybody kind of fights through it together, but you know, everyone, I mean, I think all businesses, hotels, restaurants, it really any kind of business is working on that limited staff. Yeah. The but skeleton you know, crew. Yeah. 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 But you only have each other to rely on. Yeah. And that's kind of what I was talking to somebody about yesterday was that it, you know, it does help that team building aspect, uh, but it also hinders it in a way 
Um, just because, you know, you're not doing the job that you were hired to do if you're in situations okay. like we're in. Um, you know, you can't force people to do things. You can only hope that they do things. And you're literally at the mercy of all these other people because you are in the service industry. And it's right. tough. And it's really hard for a lot of people, including myself, to stay, you know, as positive as possible, um, you know, and keep pushing through. It's just that limbo. That limbo sucks. It is. It It really sucks. Yeah. And I think a lot, you know, I think it's going to be really different for for events to move when they when they really start. I mean, you can tell it's it's just, everything's different. Nothing's the same, you know, and, and they seek, you know, people, they seek guidance from us, but I'm like, you gotta be able, you gotta tell me what your, your top people want to do, you know, because we'll do whatever you want to do. Honestly, if you want to have a thousand people cramped in the ballroom with no masks on. (laughs) Yeah. Well, you know? and so many people are afraid to make that decision. Yeah, they want I mean, somebody nobody, else to do by it the for way, them. Yeah. No one's doing that. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> they, they just want they want somebody else to be held liable. Yes, so, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, but I think you know after the handful of events, and we've had some pretty large events, and uh, nothing negative has come out of any of them. And so for me, I think that everyone everyone that's planning those events and is in attendance at, a, of, at those events is aware of what's going on. So luckily, as much as I've seen, no one's really come back at them for having an event, you know? And that's what I, and I think people are going to be scared to have events at first. I mean, everybody has been, but everything kind of works the same and our staff is the same. And you know, they have the masks on, they serve the buffets and it's kind of the same with some, with masks. Yeah. I mean, and I get the fear, but at the same time, I'm just like, you know, you're still putting all your faith and trust in the people that are coming to these events that they're going to follow the protocol. And even if they don't, you've done everything that you can. So then at some point it's on them. It's no longer on you as the planner or the organizer. For sure. For sure. I think, you know, there's someone I was talking to yesterday even said, you know, months ago that they, you know, got COVID and they have no idea where they could have gotten it from because they don't go to any public places, really. They might go out to eat. So there's just really no way of knowing, you know, you go to an event with a dinner of 400 people and there's no cases from it that anybody knows of. I mean, there's not like a mass spread of it so there's just no way to know either way and until people are comfortable but I it's just like everybody talks I mean it's gonna it's not gonna go like disappear right I feel like in the beginning we were like oh by July I remember oh by June or July this is gonna be gone you are so naive so hopeful and here we are a year later but that's why we're in the situation we're in we're that naive So I don't know. I think it'll be good. I see positive things happening and even the other hotels or businesses, I mean, like on the weekends or something, we were talking the other, yes, uh, yeah, yesterday about family weekend. And then they've also brought in that PBR mm-hmm. um, at Reed Arena. And I'm like, I'm staying home that weekend, you know, but I'm excited for the businesses you know, but those, it's like football weekends. If you live in town, typically, you know, on a Saturday, you're not going to try to like go out to eat. Yeah. Or you're going to depend on the game time. Yeah. Yeah. You go out to eat because the game's still on. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. I go out to eat during the game or I go to target or the grocery store while the game is going on (laughs) because there's nobody there. Mm -hmm. Now you run the risk though, if you go to target during the game, because everybody's hit it up before the game or not target (laughs) H-E-B. It's true, true. Both, all of them, all of them, all of the above. Yeah, and that's kind of been my running argument. Jamie and I talk about this frequently because um, I follow a lot of the uh, venue, like social media's accounts. And I was following, I've been following one and I saw that they 
featured Rita Rena the other day. And I was just like, I get it, but it's like the only facility that hasn't had to make any adjustments because of classes. Like they've still been able to do what they want and bring in even more things than they have done in years. And I'm just like, how is this even like, if you're allowing this, why are we still having to sign off on 10 or more people coming to, you know, like, it just doesn't make any sense. Like, it's like you've said earlier, it's such a gray area. It's so, you know, well, they get to do this and they get to do that. And it's just, I mean, but you see it all over social media and it's just like, it's super discouraging, you know? Um, I have a really positive outlook for like (laughs) A&M and in May when, you know, they, I think like you said, I mean, the, you can kind of see the change. Mm-hmm. I think last week you could see people were still, well, maybe I should wear my mask or, and now I think this week it's like a, I'm not, I don't need to, and I'm not going to get in trouble, which, you know, is fine. And then I think, you know, like y'all said last time, I mean, if football season happens and these things are happening, how do you, how do you not allow other things to continue and, you know, keep moving forward. Yeah. They have to, at some point, there has to be some give for sure. So have you attended any events in the community? Like not necessarily like on your personal time, you ventured out into the world beyond the Hilton. Um, <laughs> it's like what well, personal stations? time. Yeah. <laughs> my personal time. That's not a thing. Yeah. My personal time. Let's see. <laughs> Uh, not really, not in College Station. I mean, the Meeting Planner Showcase, but that was work-related. Uh, yeah, that was funny. That would count. Our poor intern. But, I had a good mimosa. You're not supposed to say that. You were working. <laughs> you had to taste it. Yeah, I know, right? It's just uh, sample size. It's just a little sample yeah, size. Yeah. Hey, it really wasn't that much. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, honestly, I haven't really been anywhere in town that I mean, I don't even think I've been out to dinner since last, you know, when they were raised the mandate or I did go to a concert, not in college station, uh, like last week and it was pretty shocking and I felt real nervous. Where, Where were you at? at? Yeah. Um, yes, well, I'm not going to name any names. I was down at a a music venue down in uh, the Woodland Spring area. Oh. Uh, and man, but there's no rule. I mean, 100%, you can't blame the venue or the artist or anyone. Well, no. And, you know, it's kind of oh, funny too. Like, like, oh, well, I'm, can we just stand over here? I'm surprised their mayor hasn't done anything because she's been real like anti everything like more strict than some areas. So um, I would have figured Houston would have had a few more restrictions because they did leave it up to a little bit, you know, some of the local businesses and governing bodies. But uh, yeah, music venues I have found just reading. Huh? Was it an outside venue? Yeah. I'm on the you know, I was gonna say, you know what it is. I know what it is. Um, well, at least an idea of what it might be. But you know, I mean, even here, like the concerts are back up to a hundred percent capacity and knowing yeah. full well where some of these concerts are going to be, there are not, even from an emergency situation standpoint, there are not good flows, you know, no, for people to even get out in that situation. So to have that many people and already knowing that their air filtration system sucks, I mean, and I doubt it was updated. Like it's just, I came out fine. Yeah. Well, I mean, we went to that reptile thing a week ago and I mean, how many days till you potentially have symptoms? Seven to 10. Yeah. I mean, we're all fine. Yeah. But it's uh, it's pretty interesting when we walked in, it was like, oh, this feels wrong. Something about this doesn't feel right. Well, I thought the same thing too. I mean, I'm glad I wore my mask. I feel bad my child sneezed on somebody, but there was like no, no social distancing for the tables in general. So I was like, well, the vendors apparently just don't care. I mean, all these people probably live out on land somewhere, you know, doing their little reptile thing. 
I mean, probably not, but yeah, sure. Well, they could. You can't tell me some of those people that had those massive amounts of stuff are living in an apartment taking care of all these animals. Oh, no, but I mean, it could be like, you know, somebody in your neighborhood. That's a scary thought. I don't like snakes. It's a real scary thought. Yeah. So You're anything, welcome. yeah, thanks, buddy. So any new develops in the world of the Houston or of the Hilton moving forward? I know you said you guys were opening up your restaurant again soon. Yeah. Uh, our restaurant is open for breakfast now. Ooh. And, and, oh, I know. Y'all need to come have breakfast. And um, the bar's open. I mean, it's pretty fully functional. Um, you know, there's just different different protocols in place. So, do you still have like the open breakfast buffet? Or you or like something? a hotel. The, yeah. the breakfast. Yeah, it's a buffet, but there's a partition and we serve it. Oh, okay. So, I haven't been in that. set up before, if you remember. And then um, we just serve it. Yeah. Well, it's been a while for sure. I've, I've done a lot since then. So, what you're saying is I would be less inclined to gorge myself because then there's a witness. <laughs> yes. You wouldn't put there. eggs and bacon and potatoes and biscuits and gravy. You might just be like, well, maybe I just want some eggs and bacon today because <laughs> I don't want that person to think that I'm going to eat all of that food. Oh, exactly. Jesus. Even though I would. <laughs> Wrong with that. that. It's a little bit more control, which is on it. It's nice. And even some of our, I mean, we haven't had some of our groups that, right? We serve the buffet. They don't have any complaint. I mean, they like it better. So, I mean, honestly, from an event planner standpoint, I think from a financial end, that would be great for them because they can control the portion and no one's going to eat more and they ain't going to run out of food. Right. Well, and that's what I was going to say. Like, is, has that been good for food cost yeah um i don't look at that probably <laughs> that's not my department i don't see yeah. those numbers but i mean you know it has I mean, like you to. said i don't know how it's not yeah yeah you know cool. you can control it better instead of someone getting four tacos on a fajita buffet they get two because they're only two giving tacos. tacos yeah it's funny so. Or half a pan of lasagna. Right. <laughs> that happens. People eat half a pan of lasagna. Lasagna is really good. <laughs> Depends on who makes it. No. Oh. oh. Kelly at the U Club used to make really good lasagna. Mm. Okay. I thought you were going to say like Fazoli's or something like that. And then I was going to have a problem. Oh. Well, I don't know. People still eat there. I don't know how that place is making it. Fratellas, oh. yeah, Fratellas too, but Fazoli's, mm. Fratellas I mean, the breadsticks, maybe. Like lasagna. <laughs> it's because they're cheap. They do like that five dollar deal where you get spaghetti and like an entire entree. So you hop in line at Taco Bell, go next door for your Italian food, and then you head home. Yeah. Gross. I mean, I don't eat there, but I've seen their signs where they have like the college <laughs> meal deals. Liar. Like three ramen in college. college. What are y'all talking about? <laughs> right? I did too. Sometimes I eat it now. It's okay. I, I got the better meals just from traveling with the soccer team. Like, yeah. No. But I do eat Taco Bell. No. <laughs> well, that's for your child's sake. That's different. Sure. <laughs> they do have a good vegetarian menu. Yeah. So. All right then. Anyway. Well, do you have any questions for us, Lord? Not that you haven't, you know kept in touch with us we do like you a lot it's like i never talked to y'all in years um yeah when are y'all gonna like open up for a bit <laughs> oh god uh that question i'm gonna defer to our interim provost and our soon-to-be president i have no idea may june i'm think well we have i don't know how many events do we have on the calendar for june or for the summer like 10? Um, yeah. Well, I mean, if yeah, you want to start it in like April, we've got a couple in April. We do. We've worked around some things in April. Um, and we are trying to convince some people to come do stuff in May, but we got the, the big fat nose slapped in our face. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but this summer I'm hopeful because hopefully we will not be in the same setups that we're in right now. And we can kind of work around some of that. Um, and then 
I'm trying to stay hopeful for the fall. I really think there will be some big changes coming. Um, I think, you know, like I said earlier, I just think that one person doesn't want to be that one person that makes that call. And then it comes back to bite them in the ass. And, you know, um, I don't know. Nobody wants to be the first one. Well, they wouldn't be technically. No, they're not. Nobody is. No, it's already happened. Right. Um, you know, just go to the East Coast. What was that town that had all the crap that happened? And now they're like trying to fight with the local government to try and get better guidelines. What was that cut the country club that had all the issues? Oh, I don't even remember where that was at. Yeah, somewhere in New Jersey. It was in one of those towns, side towns. <laughs> So if you're looking at the United States, we're going to go right the East Coast. Here. <laughs> yeah. I think those East Jersey. Coast towns. Yeah. I'm thinking it was towns. New Jersey. But yeah, so like they've already, they were the first ones that got the fine slapped on them. And now they're fighting to get better guidance and directions from the local authorities. So that way they can follow what they're asking them to do. But they're like apparently still hitting walls. They're not getting anywhere with it. And it's sad because all these, you know, visitors bureaus or the tourism areas like it's just they're taking a massive hit and then these businesses are still closing because nobody wants to make that decision right right yeah we're trying to stay hopeful yeah i think so like what we said last march oh by july it'll all be normal (laughs) i feel like that's more of a reality now it is now, but we thought it was a reality. We were so young. We were so stupid. We were. <laughs> so naive. <laughs> yeah. Everybody plays their guessing game. Yeah. TJ, you got any questions for Miss Lauren? I asked all of my questions. You were really quiet today. Was I still need information on when there is a public event there that I can attend. Oh, yeah. <sighs> yes. I'll get to that. <laughs> Or I'll just, you know, see if, up. When, when the parking lot is full and then stop by and be like, hey guys, what's going on? <laughs> I, take it. I don't know of when there's I like take a it. public event. I'll have our wonderful um, marketing people print me out a fake press pass and be like, no, no, I'm here to do an article. <laughs> they could give you a camera too. So you look real professional. There you go. I could wear pants. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. There's still a dress code. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No bikini masks. Yeah. Ew. <laughs> Should we tell that story? Lauren would probably enjoy that story. You could tell the story. I don't know that I remember the whole story. We have a colleague who told us a story that they were talking to another colleague and the, the men that have all the full beards, you know, they try to wear the mask and it doesn't cover everything. So it looks like they have a bikini on their face like a g-streak like a like a 1970s really yeah i'm never gonna be able to get that out of my head and <laughs> anyone tell me no. about it my husband's beard is getting there and every time he puts one on i'm just like wow you look stupid <laughs> and i feel i mean he hates it it's like oh i can't wait thing. it doesn't fit my face right i'm like no you're right they don't make them large enough to go around the hair that Do should you be a shield put- within itself yeah, a shield to hold all the germs in. Touch it. Yeah. You get him like a beard, a beard net, like chefs that have beards have to wear. And then yeah. he can like shove it all in there. Okay. Sorry. Too many mental pictures. Yeah. yeah. Off yeah. topic. Happy. I don't know what today is. Thursday. Well, it look. should be Friday. It should be. It's not Friday yet. Almost. It, it technically kind of is your Friday. We gotta work tomorrow. We don't gotta work tomorrow. Yeah. Do I? Sorry, Michael's gonna hate me because I've been fidgeting and moving around a lot. (laughs) Sorry, (laughs) sorry. Um. Yeah. So, what time does breakfast start? Six a.m. Are you like breakfast for dinner? She said six. I might morning. go have breakfast tomorrow. Oh. Oh. Well, yeah, that was gonna be pay. that was gonna be my next question. So is it just for guests or is it open to the public too? Well, if you want to pay for it, you can buy it. Well, yeah, I just didn't well, know. Yeah, I mean it's not free. Well, no shit. I just meant like if you're not staying there, can you just walk in and go have breakfast there? It's like if you treat like a normal yeah, restaurant. You can. 
but why don't we wait until like we can all schedule it together and y'all come over here then i'll buy you breakfast oh well i mean i'm free at six i got a three-year-old at that time okay well i'm not gonna be up at six o'clock i'm not going to be here at six (laughs) what time does it end ten so it's like nine yeah that's tomorrow let's do next week so are y'all gonna ever open the restaurant up again to do lunch and dinner or are you gonna strictly just yeah. breakfast no well yeah but we're like baby steps you know ah, i said that today she stole my phrase i stole it you stole it around the same same wavelength yeah tj Maybe wasn't something. following yeah i wasn't she wasn't following yeah we were talking about coachella is that how you say it coachella, coachella. Yeah. yeah so they pushed it back another year um Basically, it was supposed to be in October of this year, and they pushed it to April of 2022 um, because they have like over 100,000 people that come to that and not yeah. bringing all those people to one area and being able to do it safely. They decided to postpone it, which honestly is the smartest thing I feel like they could have done. Now, I know it's a huge deal, huge live music thing, but it's. Um, yeah, it's, it's, probably, it's probably a little too soon for 100,000 people. Right. And that's what I said. So I was like, you just, you know, you start with the smaller, you know, live events and baby step your way into something that large, but yeah. thinking about a hundred thousand plus people having to travel on a plane, you know, come to the hotels. Like, I don't know if they have tents or stay. I mean, you know, it's like Woodstock. I feel like I've never attended. It's always a guest based on pictures I see. So it's like, people are not, you know, yeah, you have to become friends real fast with your neighbor. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole point. I don't know. Um, what well, is it though, or is it about the music? Music brings people together. Does it though? Yes. <laughs> hmm. I don't know what kind of music you listen to. Maybe I need to get on that. Mostly Dolly Parton. <laughs> Good old Dolly. National treasure. Yes, she is. Don't forget to watch the Tina Turner documentary that's coming up. Nope. What? Okay, fine. She's anyways. Yeah, anyways. I know. Well, Lauren, thanks for joining us as always. Yeah, we appreciate thanks. the feedback and update on how the Hilton is doing. Yeah, thanks for having me. Anytime. Yeah, we'll have our people contact your people to set up breakfast. Cool. <laughs> yeah, contact Sarah. my people. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Jamie, get on that. Oh, I was going to say Sarah. <laughs> Usually it's her. Lauren's usually like, hey, what are y'all doing in a couple of weeks? Tell me this. When are y'all free? And then it's like, oh, wait, I forgot I have this. Can y'all move it to this day? <laughs> always. Oh, we can always. Be... We're cool. flexible. We're super I'm flexible. Sorry. No, it's t- we don't care. We I know, care. but I seriously am the worst at that. At least you respond to messages. I'm getting bad where I forget to respond and I thought I did. Yeah. And at I'll least like you that. just don't like let it ride and then we're there and you don't show up. True. True. You're uh, that's fucked up. Half responsible. Yeah. Half responsible. We'll take it. All right. Well, until next okay. time. Thank you, yeah. Lauren. We appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. You Bye. too. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining us this week on Events Real Talk. Make sure to visit us at Events Real Talk on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, where you can subscribe to the show on YouTube, Spotify, or Apple Podcasts, so you'll never miss a show. While you're at it, if you enjoy the show, leave a review or comment, or if you'd simply tell a friend about the show, that would help us out too. References. Thanks for listening.